when we use the word masterclass, you know, oftentimes there's this um, assumption that there's like a, a finite amount of knowledge and like I'm transferring something, it's like a transaction. And it is actually the very opposite of what I believe in because I think that um, in any art, it's an infinite loop. It goes on in our discovery of the piece and how it sits with each individual pianist is going to be completely different. And so our purpose today is for me to, to share some tools and some ideas of how you guys are gonna pursue your own artistic journeys. And I just wanna encourage you to share and, and be strong in your personal visions because that's where we're going off of. Okay, so with that, we have, I think we're starting with Brady.
audience. Good, you know. Just like <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to know how you felt with the piano. Did you did you feel like it responded? Did you get what you liked out of it? Yeah, it's a bit quiet, I'd say. Like a bit quiet for what I am used to. Uh -huh. Well, but yeah, there was a lot of great sound we're getting out that way. Yeah. So yeah, good. Were you able to get the quiet that you wanted? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um, I wonder. There's there's a couple things that I think will be really fun for us to try, but I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the character of that E major section in the middle. What what do you want us to experience there? Well, I feel like it's kind of like a Signing, supposed to be like a victorious kind of section, so it's like kind of builds up to the very end part with the and it like builds up to that part and then it repeats again and it's like just a kind of a victorious section because it is yeah. a heroic polonaise after all. Heroic and um, yes, victorious. Now what about the right hand? Can you play the melodic line in the yeah. right hand? concept of what the legato line would be, the melodic line. So if you if you just play the top line, you know, without worrying about all the octave stuff and use a little pedal, how would you like for it to sound? Right? Like it would be not the up and down. So let's add a little pedal and just see, play around with that. And you don't have to use the fingering yeah. for real. But just play with the line that you want us to hear. Yeah. So, like... so don't don't play the right. Just play the top. Okay. So do you want it to be? Do you want it to release? Yes. Yes. I'm leading you. <laughs> I want it to release. differentiate that, right? By the way, this is page six. Mm. If you want to look on with me, we can look at the markings here. So jump, and then he restarts, and then he climbs, and then there's an accent yeah. at the very top. So I think that, you know, I, I really like to simplify things to a place where my body is really comfortable playing around with the concept. So let's do that one line again and do whatever pedaling you would like. Just the. Yeah. Okay, you really want that F sharp to be accented. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm? Yeah, what I I'm hearing with the height. Which is a lot here. <laughs> then we can play with the simplicity of just the, the one melodic line, and uh, so that's something worth exploring. But I, yeah, I, I'm hearing the difference in inflection. So I think you're on the same page with me. Yeah. And um, okay, let's go on to a different spot. Um, let's go to page nine. There is a lot of uh, meandering in the right hand, right? And that can be tough because he really goes on for a long time. He loves this meandering stuff. What do you want us to feel with all this? It's kind of like, I guess, it's, it's the part of the loss. Like, I'm lost, but then it kind of will get like, it's kind of like the... Yeah, like that. Oh, 
Okay, and, and what is that? That's, he's no longer lost? It's kind of a loss, but then like up by like a little sliver of hope and then like the loss again. Okay. Comes up from there. Okay, so the sliver of hope in the harmonic color. Wonderful. So when you do the meandering, um, I think that when we have, when we use larger body parts, we can be a little bit more subtle with our movements. I see you using a lot of up here, but I don't see that your wrist is invited to the party. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you, have you guys talked about how your wrist might contribute to the sound you want? Yeah, a little bit, but... Okay. And, and do you think that you were using your wrist? No. Okay. So is that because you feel like it wasn't doing anything for your sound? Yeah, I feel like it just it didn't make a difference in this. Sound. Okay. Well, do you mind if we revisit that and see yeah. maybe there's a reason why it wasn't doing anything? Mm -hmm. and, and let's keep the left hand out so we can really hear it. So are you playing in the keys or are you trying to be super soft for me? <laughs> Okay. All right. So, you know, there's a, um, there's a duration to each note, right? Even, even the fast ones, especially the fast ones. And I think that you can take advantage of the ends of each note more because sometimes I hear there's a beginning and an end to each note and I kind of would rather it slide into the next. Yeah. So if you do... I'm using a ton of wrist, right? Are you looking at my wrist? I know you're doing different fingering, but is that your fingering? You're doing two, one, two? Yeah, and are you feeling the very end of each note? Yeah, I just like saw that like right there. Mm, what do you guys think of that? You know what you just did? You just, you just let your ear lead what your hand was gonna do instead of the other way around, which was what I heard was your hands were playing all the right notes and saying, okay, I gotta do this now. But what you just did was you changed, you shifted to letting your ear lead. Now let's do that whole section, but with that sound being really sunk in to the bottom like you were just doing, not loud, but just really deep. I'm not sure that it's staying partially because um, partially because I, I feel like it's going back to each finger. And even if you're thinking the wrist, I think the fingers are taking over again <laughs> because they're like, we know how to do this. We don't need you. <laughs> and, and the thing is that that line feels like it's really clear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, do you like photography? Yeah. You know how sometimes um, they have, there's portrait shots mm -hmm. where your face is super clear yeah. and then the background is really blurry? Yeah. Yeah. So there are times where I think this is a moment where I would like a little more blurriness mm -hmm. and that comes with the wrist and your wrist right now is quite high. Is that intentional? Do you like it up here? Yeah, it's intentional because I used to have it like more like this when I was much littler. So this is <laughs> okay, yeah, it's interesting, you know, when we, when we adjust and fix things, um, I always find it's best to adjust it internally for your, from your sensation rather than from the external view of what the angle is, because actually all our angles are very different, but what you want to do is go with the sound you're hearing. The sound I'm hearing is that it is kind of being held instead of letting it really sink, so. Do you feel like there's a there's an elasticity you can get by not holding your wrist at a certain angle and just letting it do whatever it needs to do? Yeah. Can you try that? The, 
the big leaps are always the hardest one for legato. But did you did you feel a different sense of the yeah, sound? Yeah, it's time? feel it's weighted. It's weighted, and it's not any louder, but the sound is so much creamier. Yeah. Right. Did you guys like that? Yeah. You other two pianists, do you guys have any observations, Pierce and Yako? Yeah, I just I think it makes everything sound more even. Um, I just think it sounds like it's Yeah, I would agree. Like playing in the key definitely kind of warms up the sound a lot more than kind of playing not like timidly but like lightly on the keys, you know, versus pressing. Fabulous. Yeah, that was wonderful. I, I, I thought that was beautifully done. Okay, let's let's take a look at the very opening. As, as, our, uh, as our closing, we will look at the opening. <laughs> this is a really fun opening to play. Um, indeed. <laughs> I wonder, there's a lot of these thrusts, right? It's like, I, I think of a... I was thinking of this uh, rocket taking off, you know, like shoo, yeah. shoo, and it keeps going higher. Um, the pedal is a great way to cheat in terms of building that energy, and I think that you're you're very honest with your pedaling. Like you you don't use it very much, and this this uh, score here, I guess it doesn't have too many places, but I would say it doesn't mean that you can't add pedal because the way that they played it, they played it by ear, right? Yeah. And so you add as you go. And whenever you have a crescendo or something rising or thrusting, I want it to feel like your pedal is participating too. So in the very opening, let's just hear how you get from the first downbeat to the second downbeat. Just from the very first note. Yeah. So, okay, could you add a little bit of pedal so that we hear a little bit of direction towards the second downbeat? Okay, did you guys hear a difference? How about the second one? Actually, you know what? Before we get to the second time, let's just go where you stop because all that, that crazy muddy stuff. Try it with pedal, with crescendo. Okay, now this time in tempo, so just yeah. go ahead. Oh, but really go into it. Huh. Yes! Now the second time. Go ahead. sound maybe that's do you think that's what you meant like the the drama yeah like, like the building. pedaling right the build up the awesome great okay so and throughout the piece there's just plenty of places when you have that big scale do you want to try that with some pedal yeah so i think for big scale 
feels like that, you want to save a little crescendo for the very end. Yes, okay. Now, try to stay, like, to glide on the keys. Instead of having your fingers be in the air, just go. Okay, and think about sinking the way you were doing before. Okay, now give me a big at the end. Now, can your left hand help out more with the crescendo? Okay, so here. Like, so push it in. Yeah, in and in. Blah, like that. Yeah, so what's the fingering on the end? Uh, so are you using the 4 3 2 and then. in the end, then, then it makes sense when that big five chord comes. Mm -hmm. And the very last thing I'll just say is that take your time when there's a lot of interesting harmonic colors going on. I know it's a really fast, uh, a fast action piece. There's, there's so much going on and it's exciting. But for instance, in measure 29, I want to actually know what the chords are. Right? So let's look at 29, measure 29. So that, and then, okay, so what are these chords? Can you tell us what these chords are? Like, what they are? Yeah. Um, they're mostly minor chords that, um, kind of, they have to put emphasis, especially on the right hand to be able Sure, to but let, let's just t take the B flat minor. So that's your homework. You can email me. Email me when you find out what that chord is doing there. Okay, and uh, it's it's a very interesting color and it's taking us somewhere really interesting. But the the speed, the tempo at which you were playing it, there was no time for us to be like, oh, wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it's just a B minor chord, it's, it's a very special function. Yeah. Okay, with that, thank you so much for playing. It was awesome.